All right, welcome to this uh, Defeating Adventism number 29 we are at. And boy, the time is just flying here. It seemed like it was just number one the other day. You know, I am inspired to do this video because if you've seen my videos, and, and I've said before, and if you haven't, go back and look at some. Uh, I'm a subscriber to the Adventist Review magazine, and here's my latest copy that I received in the mail two days ago. And it's the June 2021 issue. I always look at my Adventist Review magazine to see what they're saying or not saying, and that is the case. But I am inspired to do this video because of an article that I read in here. So because we're going to look at this magazine, we're going to look at a few other things. We're going to look at a couple older magazines, Review and Herald. We're going to look at something from the Christian Connection, you'll see here in a minute, from Elias Smith. We are going to look at this Adventist author, Accepting Ellen White. This was a very interesting read. It says, Early Seventh-day Adventists and the Gift of Prophecy Dilemma. Yeah, that dilemma is still with us today. And you'll, oh, So anyway, we're going to look at his book. We are going to look at this one here. This is an original book printed in 1829 that I had uh, restored. It's from a gentleman named William Kincaid. And he is, uh, you'll see he'll be described as one of the founders of the Christian Connection. And one of the last things I think we're going to look at is a current book today. It's the Seventh-day Adventist Church Manual. This is the 19th edition, revised in 2015. So as I said, I was inspired to do this video because of this magazine and what I read in it in terms of an article. I want you to look now with me online at that article. And so we have an article about that, are the dead really dead? And, and it's, you know, going back in time, but talking about how others either share or don't share Seventh-day Adventist beliefs. But look at the top, what I got underlined. The Christian Connection was one of the first uniquely American Christian groups to emerge in the United States. Look at what that sentence says. Christian Connection, American group, United States. Okay. One of the leaders of this group, Elias Smith, promulgated the idea in his period, and, and it's, it's the idea, you know, it's the, uh, are the dead really dead? Uh, he promulgated this idea in, in one of his periodicals called the Herald of Gospel Liberty. I'm going to show you one of those. Keep reading with me down the page. Then we talk here about, we make a link here between Joseph Bates after his baptism in a Christian Connection Church in 1827 and how James White was a, a member, but he was a, he was a minister for the Christian Connection. Now read this, the print edition, on page 51, and tell me, if is the Christian Connection a Christian group or a non-Christian group? I, I think you'd walk away from this and say, well, they're a Christian group, they may have some different beliefs, but they're a Christian group. At least that's what an Adventist would say. So we're, we're now going to go here to this book here. So look with me on screen. We see here we got Accepting Ellen White, copyrighted in 2016. Sorry for all my notes, but I take proliferous notes in all my books that I read, things I want to refer back to. So who is this author? Well, he's just down the street from me, Loma Linda School of Religion, member of the faculty. You can see he got his PhD, uh, you know, from Andrews University. So he's no slouch. Matter of fact, this book is his, is his thesis. Let's look in his book. So go with me here on page 19. And you can read the whole page. You can pause. What's the Christian connection? He mentions, see, Christian connection group. Ah, uh, William Kincaid. I showed you that book earlier. One of its founders. Keep reading down the page with me in the red lines. With its appeal to pure Christian practices, the Christian connection attracted many followers. So, so here again, Christian connection is appealing to Christian practices. Elias Smith, Abner Jones, two major leaders in the movement. And again, we see here, what's it say? James White and Joseph Bates, the other two founders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, came from the Christian Connection. Then he goes on to say, their values on the primacy of the Bible as the only source of theological authority and the perpetuity of spiritual gifts were influenced by the Christian's theology. So, what we have here now is very positive affirmation of the Christian connection. Now, we got what? This book is 2016. This magazine is 2021. But it goes back much further than that. Look with me here. Here we are, the Advent Review and Sabbath Herald. You can see here, May 1st, 1888. We're stepping back in time. 
we're going to look at the page you see on the right hand side of the screen where, and we're going to zoom in on that box that you see uh, bordered in red. Let's look at that box. It says what? The Herald Gospel Liberty edited by Elias Smith tells us when it was published. The first one, I don't have an underline, but you can read it there, September 1st, 1808. And then what's the Advent Review and Herald say? Thinking that our people generally would be interested in a perusal of this pioneer document of modern Christianization, and you can keep reading there, what do they do? They offer a facsimile of the first edition from September of 1808 for sale you know, for the reading enjoyment of the readers of Adventism. So who is this Christian connection? Because thus far, you're gonna, you should walk away from this and say, they're a Christian group. Matter of fact, Adventists are even selling facsimiles of their literature by one of their founders. Well, let's look at that same magazine that Seventh-day Adventists put up for sale in 1888. We're going to look at one year later in 1809. Look with me here on the screen. Here's the September 15th, 1809 issue. And there's Elias Smith. We are going to look at page 111. Mr. Elias Smith is in a dialogue with a Mr. M. Now, these magazines are hard to read back then. Back in the day, S's were often printed as kind of F's. So read along with me and you'll catch, you'll catch this. Mr. M thinks my sentiments on this subject are nothing short of Trinitarianism. This name I disown and believe in one God. Now, Elias Smith is being very clear. I don't believe in the Trinity. Look at the next set of red lines. He then says, page 6, a trinity of persons in unity is most clearly revealed in the scripture. Now he's quoting Mr. M, but Elias Smith says, I am sure that a man must be very weak to write in this manner. So now he's criticizing anybody that is in favor of the trinity. The last three lines, all this I believe, but all this is not trinity. This is an invention. Elias Smith is an anti-Trinitarian, plain and simple. So who is he? He's, a, he's an anti-Trinitarian. This is the very same magazine that was for sale. I mean, the very same, yeah, magazine a year earlier, but for sale as for the benefit of Adventists in 1888. Go with me here now. We're going to look at this book I held up earlier from William Kincaid. So look with me on screen. Here is William Kincaid's book from 1829, and there's the title page. Let's look at what William Kincaid, one of the founders, remember the uh, Loma Linda uh, theolo uh, faculty member said? And, he, and what does William Kincaid say? He says this, look on page 39. We're going to read pages 39 and 40. 39, first block of red text. Many good people believe that in God there is a trinity of three co-eternal, co-essential, co-eternal persons whom they call God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Then he goes on to say in the last paragraph, if these phrases were in the Bible, I would not say a word against them, but as neither the word Trinity nor all the co's are in the Bible, he doesn't believe it. Go to the top of page 40. What does he say? These are all mere human inventions. And lastly, he says what? The moment we conceive of three persons who are equally God, the moment we conceive of three beings who are equally God, which is basically tritheism is what he's saying, right? Thus far, have you read anything in the Adventist literature that says this group is not Christian? Anything. Matter of fact, the literature is, you can either say it's agnostic and that it's not sane, or you could even say it's positive, but it definitely is not critical of the theology of the Christian connection, critical to such an extent that I would say that they are not Christian and should not be read. Quite the contrary. Remember back in 1888, they were offering up Elias Smith magazine for sale. So, nowhere do you really find it. Now, I did find one art, I found a couple articles, and let's look at this one on screen. 
This is from April 22nd, 1999. It's by Jerry Moon, who I'm very familiar with. He writes on the, uh, wrote on the Trinity a lot during this time frame. We're going to look at these two red boxes here that are going to be highlighted on page 10. What does Jerry Moon say on page 10? He says this, Some writing about the Trinity in a curious mixture of Bible, medieval philosophy, and personal opinions of the writer. This wasn't lost on some Christians of the early 1800s who associated the doctrine of the Trinity with other traditional beliefs they personally rejected. So it was an American denomination called the Christian Connection concluded that the doctrine of the Trinity, at least the form that they knew it and they had encountered, was of non-biblical origin. Some prominent Millerites, such as Himes and early Sabbath keeping in Venice, including Joseph Bass and James White, had been members of the Christian connection. So at least here Jerry Moon tells us they don't believe in the Trinity, but we still see associations of early Adventists with Christian connections. Again, I say to you Adventists, and this video really is for you, my Adventist friends, is the Christian connection Christian? Is their denial of the Trinity Christian? Let that bake for a minute. Let's look at this slide here. We got a summary. Adventist literature, even as, 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 as late as this June 2021 issue, often cites the Christian connection, but it never labels them as a non-Christian group. Elias Smith and William Kincaid, you see, were cited as two founders. In 1888, they sold facsimile copy of the Herald of Gospel Liberty by Elias Smith, and we have admission that James White Joseph Bates were both members of the Christian Connection. Was the Christian Connection Christian? Can you be an Adventist today and deny the Trinity? A faithful Adventist and deny the Trinity? I'm going to say no. And I'm going to say no based on this. Look with me on the screen. Here is your church manual, 19th edition, revised in 2015. Look with me here. Baptismal vow number one says what? Do you believe there is one God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons? Can you be an Adventist and deny one or more baptismal vows in your church manual? Can you? I don't think you can. I mean, just look at the top of the page. Go back and look at the top of the page because on the top of the page that I quoted from, it says membership. How do you become a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? You do a number of things, but one of those things is you get baptized and you affirm these vows that are in this book. Hmm. Look with me here on this next slide here. Back to Joseph Bates and James White. They both died before the Seventh-day Adventist Church in its, and I'll say, so-called Trinitarian position in the very late 1800s. Did James... White and Joseph Bates die as Christians? We got a Christian Connection minister, and we got one baptized as a Christian Connection. Both died holding their anti-Trinitarian views. All I gotta do is just read the review in Herald Magazine, especially for James White. I find them all over the place. So at Venice, this is important because we still see Joseph Bates and James White routinely in your literature, just like we see Christian Connection. Are Christian connection, theological views, Christian? Were the views of James White and Joseph Bates Christian? Would they even be admitted in your church today if they denied baptismal vow number one like they would have before they passed away because they were both staunch anti-Trinitarians? So are they Christian? I'm going to say holding those views while I'm not their eternal judge I can only judge what I've seen them write, and particularly James White. And I think it was James White who said the Trinity is an old, uh, you know, it's an absurdity. Clearly, not a Christian. See what your leaders are doing to you and my Adventist friends? They're not being frank with you and actually calling out heresy when they see it and encounter it. Because if you can deny the Trinity and be a Christian, I don't think even you at Venice would say that, that those two go together. You at Venice, I believe today, would say you have to affirm the Trinity and then you're a Christian. But can you deny it? James White clearly did. Joseph Bates clearly did. But they won't call it non-Christian. And they won't call it heresy. 
Your leaders, this is just one small area, are misleading you at Venice. Look at all the quotes we did in the Christian Connection. They all look very positive. But it's a heretical group. Now, in your literature, you will frequently call Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons and Hindus and other groups, you call them cults. I assume by cult, then in the Review and Herald lingo, that means not Christian. But I don't see that same language reserved for the Christian Connection. Because you know why? Because Joseph Bates and James White were members, and they can't do that. They won't do it. They won't call them non-Christian. Well, I will. I'll call them non-Christian. Christian connection, theological views are non-Christian. The theological views as espoused by James Springer White and Joseph Bates were non-Christian. From all apparent readings that I have, they died not as Christians. But your magazine won't say that. So, with this Adventist, I want you to keep in mind when you read Review and Herald magazines, this quote here you're going to see on screen. This is the qualification for elders. And this, in Titus, this is why I left you in Crete so that you might put what remained into order and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. If anyone is above reproach, the husband of one wife and his children are believers and not open to the charge of debauchery and insubordination. For an overseer as God's steward must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or drunkard or violent or greedy for gain, but hospitable, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. Read what I got underlined here. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. Your leaders in Adventism cannot and do not meet the criteria that you see in Titus 1 through 5. Your leaders at Venice are leading you astray and for this you ought to examine them and their teachings. Examine yourself before it's too late.